Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and here I am in my Drake Navy issue and with me is Yepfar Dexter in a pair of Ospreys. He's multi-screening, I'm not. He's gonna unleash the repping power of these Ospreys upon me really just as a demonstration during the running of this mission. The mission today is Serpentis Extravaganza, quite a big one. But let's see how we get on. The Drake is exactly the same as you've seen it before. It's got Tech 2 ham launchers and it's got a lovely big passive tank. But first, let's look at the Ospreys. Now the Osprey here, the way we're going to use them, they're going to be giving capacitor to each other and it's all about the hull bonuses. A thousand percent bonus to remote capacitor transmitter range, 200 percent bonus to the actual amount and a 430 percent bonus to your remote shield booster optimal range and fall off. It also gets exactly the same cruiser skill based bonuses as the Mimitar Scythe we used a few videos ago to do some logi while we ran a mission of 12.5% to shield booster amount and a 5% per level reduction in the activation cost of the shield booster. But the Scythe does not get the bonuses for the cap transmitter, instead it gets a hull bonus for logistic drone output. So the two Ospreys we've got here can not only put out a big amount of reps, they can keep each other cap stable through the running of a site or a fight or whatever, and their bonuses mean they do not have to get in close to be moving cap around like uh, unbonus chips, such as uh, web tanking, myrmidons, etc. would need to keep quite a tight formation. These guys have got quite a bit of flexibility. To do the repairing, we've got four enduring remote shield boosters fitted up in the high slots. They're giving out 244 hit points of reps a second, and that's per Osprey, with a 27 kilometer optimal and a 66 kilometer fall off, which is very handy. Then we get to the Corpum C-Type Medium Remote Capacitor Transmitter, the core piece of this fit. It's got a 74 kilometer range, with no fall off optimal mechanic going on with that. It's just got a straight 74 kilometer range, and every five seconds, that's gonna cycle and transfer 366 points of capacitor. And nowhere near as expensive as its name suggests, I'm very pleased to say if we check, there you go, just over 700 grand over in Botane. This fit is expensive, we'll get to why in a second. In the mid slots, we've got a compact micro warp drive to get us where we need to be on grid nice and quickly, but we're not gonna be running it all the time. We've got a pair of multi-spectrum shield hardener twos. This fit has a compact large shield extender and a compact cap battery. Now, the mid slots is where you can vary things and mix things up, obviously, for the specific damage you might be expecting to take. This fit is not for these sites specifically. This is really just to showcase these ships as a principle and how you might use them and how powerful they can be. So this is fitted for general use and adjusted to your kind of fitting. And the reason this fit is so expensive, we've got one nanofiber internal structure down in the bottom. That makes us a little bit quicker and more agile. But next to it right here, we've got the Caldari Navy Power Diagnostic System. Now that's giving us a bonus to our cap recharge rate our shields and of course our power grid and it makes this fit work it does make it very expensive that module is probably half the price of this fit and next to it to round off the low slots we've got one capacitor flux coil too that increases the capacitor recharge rate at the cost of base capacitor amount you may have noticed the fit is not showing as cap stable we'll get to that bit in a minute for rigs we've got a tech 2 em reinforcer we've got a medium shield extender and we've got a semiconductor memory cell again giving us more capacitor now for the magic right the capacitor transmitter let's look at his stats and this is obviously the stats as fitted on our ship and next to them on the right there are the raw stats for the module just so you can see how much the Osprey is boosting them. So the activation cost is down by about 30 from 119 per cycle to 89. The range is up from under 7 kilometers to nearly 75, which is amazing. The activation time is still 5 seconds, but the amount of energy transferred is up to 366 from a base 122. So for that five second cycle, if we divide 366 by five, it's gonna give us how much cap we're sending over to the other ship per second, that's 73.2. Now this number needs to be bigger than this number. The minus 66 is what we're losing on our fit. So as long as that number in the calculator is bigger than what we're losing on the fit screen, we know we're gonna end up being cap stable when we're out on grid. So that little bit of maths is just how you do the check. 
obviously check the other ships that you're going to be able to keep him cap stable the other alt that dex is using doesn't need that kaldari navy power diagnostic system or at least isn't using one so this fit is about half the price of the other one this is the fit i'll drop down in the description it's the cheaper version obviously upgrade and tweak fits according to your skills so that's enough about the ships let's get out and do the site so we're going to do serpentis extravaganza there's not an awful lot to it as usual with serpentis it's thermal and kinetic damage to deal and resist we've got some frigates um on grid when we arrive and then some that are going to spawn that are going to try to tackle us and get webs on us we'll take those down with the drones or the missiles right. sensor dampeners don't really scare us in this ship with the hams with rage hams we only have a 20 kilometer range we have a lovely dps of 832 with regular scourge missiles which i'm going to use and they do apply a bit quite a bit better we've got a 24 kilometer range and 583 dps and this Drake Navy issue has 69,000 EHP, which is lots and lots, but it's good because we've got to get close. Now, what I do like about this Drake Navy issue, and uh, we have got one nanofiber internal structure on the fit, but it's very agile. It doesn't feel as big and slow as some battle cruisers do. And that's how it tends to avoid taking damage, is basically by not getting hit, particularly by the bigger ships. Now, we do have to get in close. I'm not sure how much we're going to need the Ospreys, but what we've decided to do for the first room is the Ospreys are just going to rep me through the room, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Be interesting. So I'm just going to settle in, take down the frigates as usual. You kind of know the routine by now, I'm sure. Spawn the next waves. I'm not being particularly careful about what I'm spawning here because I've got the backup of the Ospreys. So let's just see how this goes, shall we? I'm holding my drones at this stage just while I take down the frigates because they're the things that are most likely to do any damage on my drones and I'd like to keep them through the mission. And I'm just checking there and these are the Rage Ham missiles with the target painter taking down the frigates no problem. Maybe not the most efficient way but it does it. So we're just going to work our way through. I've cut in the screen that Dexter has got. We're running at the same speed, it's all sped up now because uh, there's nothing really new to see in terms of running the site. But you can just kind of see how he keeps on top of things with the Ospreys. You can see enough of my screen to see that I basically just breeze through it killing stuff. With regards to the Ospreys, they've got a 74 kilometer cap transfer range. And then they've got a 24 kilometer, or is it a 27 kilometer optimal range on their repper so if you add all that together there's two of them at either end of that 74 kilometer range so combined they've got about 125 kilometer range that they can cover and give reps at their optimal so if you've got a bit of a fleet battle going on these guys can kind of split up and kind of rep where they need to rep whilst keeping themselves cap stable which makes them a very flexible logistics pairing indeed and of course you could not be really going for the reps and you could just be going for the cap boosts i guess if you were going to go into a battle or some kind of fight you've got to go in close and you think those other guys are going to be trying to nuke you out you could have a couple of ospreys sat out at a bit of a range just throwing as much cap into you as possible who knows that's something maybe we'll look at another day let me know if you use ospreys for their cap boosting potential rather than their logi they certainly do have that flexibility for sure actually i just thought the fall off range on the reps on these ospreys is 66 kilometers if you add that to the uh, cap transfer range they could give out reps to ships that were like 200 kilometers apart i must say though the grid's got that big it's probably getting a bit messy <laughs> but there you go yeah these can really reach out cover quite a big area of space if you run the cap transfer modules on a non-bonus chip, say we use them on Myrmidons, obviously you've got to stay at a very close range and not getting the boost on the output. They can make the difference to a fit for sure. That's why you use them. And uh, the, just the fact, the, the, the weird kind of whatever EVE physics is doing there, that you do actually get more power and quite a lot more power out of a cap transfer module than you put into it. So I should have pointed it out when we were looking at numbers, but I'm sure you probably noticed that. But the activation cost is much less than the transfer amount, for sure. Very weird. Somebody explain that to me in a comment. You can definitely have a skin. And again, as with the Scythe, what a better way to learn how to kind of do this kind of thing than something that's 
reasonably predictable and not too dangerous like a level 4 mission um, I did get a comment on the side video actually oh it'd be much more efficient for you to just get an extra DPS ship and you just clear it all quicker yeah that really wasn't the point of the video was it <laughs> it was uh, look this is how you can do a bit of fleet action this is how you can learn a bit of logi these two ships um, yeah they work really well together I mean they are twins basically aren't they and as you can see, neither the Drake Navy issue nor the Ospreys are taking any registrable damage really here at all. The Drake is getting hit a bit. I think you can see a little bit of red on there now and again through the running of that room. But I mean, how OP was that? I've charged into the first room of Serpentis Extravaganza with my heavy assault missiles and you pretty much look like there's nothing shooting at me at all from what you can see of my screen anyway. <laughs> Brilliant, I love it. And of course, not only is this method just maybe a little bit more variety or maybe interesting than just bringing more DPS, it's much cheaper. Even two of those expensive Osprey fits are half the cost of the Drake Navy issue. But I think for the next two rooms, we will not do it that way. We do want you to get a glimpse of the actual power of the Drake. So in the next couple of rooms, the Drake's going to go in and clear them and then the Osprey is going to come in right at the end and just see how quickly he can get me back up to full shield. You can show off that way so yeah now it's time for the drake to do a little bit of work while we're on the subject of prices i did have a look at what ships to use next and in doing so noticed that battleship prices have come down to about 274 275 million for tech bomb battleships from well it was 400 wasn't it when the panic first kicked in so uh, the navy issue drake is still about 100 mil cheaper than a raven but when i looked at a uh, Brutix Navy issue, or was it? Fed Navy Brutix, sorry, Galante people. Compared to a Dominix, they were about the same price. Like both those holes are about 274 mil. So I'm going to use one of those ships next time I run some level fours. I think it's time to put this Drake out to the pasture of the belts in low sec. Checked the next room on the way in, obviously using the Eve Wiki guide. Nothing too scary in here. Pretty much the same as always. So. We're just going to pick out the ones that are going to get any kind of tackle on us once they come into the range and we'll just start working our way through. Now, as I did mention, yeah, it's the agility, I think, and the speed that we can keep going in this ship. With the afterburner burning, we do not seem to take much damage at all, even though we do have to get in pretty close. Now, we'll see how that principle applies to this site, because I know this is one of the more challenging ones. I'm not sure how exactly it equates to Angel's extravaganza, so let me know if they are literally just the same thing with different rats or if there are substantial differences. Angel's extravaganza just did not come up in the rotation yet. So I've got to get in within 24 kilometers for my hams to apply. Now there's just some tackle frigates knocking around. One lot is a reinforcement wave, so we'll be absolutely fine here. And of course, <laughs> Although we do have a plan for the Ospreys, should things get hairy, of course, he can come through the gate. He's only the other side of the gate and can start repping me from there with his awesome ranges. So I know I'm very, very safe, but I'm very impressed with how the Drake does this, as I am every time I fly this Drake. What I personally find is battleships are great, but... For me, they're not very versatile. They're very slow. I like, I think, Battle Cruisers is about my favourite <laughs> in terms of the speed of the ship, how you get to places, uh, what you can do with them. A little bit more versatile as well. You could plod around high sec with this Navy issue Drake, clearing all the combat sites that you found very efficiently, running some missions when you fancied it. Obviously, you can't get your battleship into all of those combat sites where you might get some nice loot drops. You're also going to have much better skills in the battle cruiser than you are going to have in the battleship, certainly when you first get into it. So I think it's an option. It's an option. I've now trained up level four of Kaldari battleship. So with rapid heavy missile launchers, I can get over a thousand DPS out of the Raven. So I may well chuck the Raven in. If I get Angel's Extravaganza up or something like that, we'll chuck the Raven into that one. But no, I really do like this Drake. It suits me. It suits the way I like to fly. I'm very happy with having to get in close and punch them in the face. They can't do much to me. The drones are all safe and sound. And we're looking good. And we're working our way through this room very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Okay, well, as you can see, in the running of this room, pretty much cleared it now, haven't I? I've only lost about a third of my shield anyway. 
Billy Osprey is going to come in, join me and get me ready for the next room. This is in real time now. This is how quick I get repped. There you go. Two cycles off of each Osprey and I'm all good to go. Right, yeah. <laughs> Ospreys are brilliant. So I'll just finish off these baddies right here and then it's into the last room and I think if I remember rightly the last room has a little surprise when you go in it but we'll see and while we finish off that last rat let's have a quick look at this beautiful Vedmax skin the scope syndication skin it's today's giveaway prize the skins will be given out on Sunday and the next video will be out on Sunday there are the winners of the last skins the Tempest skins to have a chance of winning yourself one of these splendid Red Max skins, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, please. You don't have to, but it would be lovely if you did. Just some comments about Ospreys, about level fours, about a little bit of fleet, small gang action. Were you surprised to find out that you can create capacitor out of thin air using a capacitor transmitter? Or just by the range at which these two Ospreys can operate? Anyway, comments down below. Good luck. Quick check on the mission guide, doesn't look too frantic, but look where we land. We land within 10,000 metres of about eight ships there. Sorry I didn't get a better shot, but yeah, I wouldn't want to land that close in a big slow battleship unless you had some powerful reps going on. But anyway, we're just going to turn around and fly away and start shooting them. Because I think me being able to apply my DPS straight away is going to work to my advantage rather than theirs here. So once I get out to a a decent distance pull a little bit of range just settle into an orbit and just start burning the poor rats down basically i'm not going to play it at all safe i know obviously i've got the backup of the two ospreys just the other side of that gate in case it does get at all hairy but we're just going to wade in here get stuck in and as you watch that unfold in front of you I couldn't make a video this week without mentioning the monocle that has gone up for sale in the Plex store. Simply because the, it's quite a symbolic item for those of you that are newer to EVE. Back in, I'm sure it was 2012, it might have been 2011. But to be honest, it's been so many years now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, was EVE's Summer of Rage, and the monocle was a feature of that. But it was, it was a conglomeration of things, to be honest with you. Uh, back then, something to remember about Eve was that there were no alpha accounts. It was a subscription or a trial account for 21 or 28 days, I think. And uh, the training queue, you could only stack for 24 hours, like you can with an alpha queue now. But that was the only way to do it. So then Eve suffered a series of DNS attacks. That obviously interrupted people getting on to do their training, got them quite fretful. Then they introduced the captain's quarters, which was like a third person over the shoulder view of your alt in your kind of like your little room, but you couldn't really do anything. You could just click on some buttons, but the problem was it was so graphics intensive. A lot of people, including myself, could not run Eve. You could not opt out of that view. It took a while for them to make it so you could switch off that view and just go back into the hangar view. And then to cap it all, and this was probably the really deciding factor. Once you could get back into your hangar, you couldn't spin your ship. Yeah, then the uh, Plex store kind of opened, although it wasn't the Plex store. Because Plex was just a one month item, it couldn't be subdivided. There was an extra currency called Aura, I think. And then you had to buy that and you know convert stuff around and you'd lose a bit more money doing that. And then... There was a real big protest, I think it focused around Amar, I remember there being loads of stuff going on at Amar, against the whole concept of microtransactions and was it going to be paid to win, etc, etc. And uh, yeah, so seeing that monocle come back, and CCP are well aware of that, it has been alluded to in some of the stuff I've seen about it. But anyway, back to the action, and we've nearly killed them all, and this is where, yeah, I think now we start regening shield anyway. But I don't let him start repping me until we're provably through this room and safe. And then you can just see how quick the Ospreys get me ready for more action. It's quite incredible, really. Yeah, I've been getting some thoughts together for a video along the lines of kind of what is Eve, since I just mentioned pay to win. I mean, is Eve pay to win? What is even winning at Eve? I think winning at Eve is just having the biggest grin on your face, personally. But <laughs> your opinion may well differ. But as you can see now, we are regening shield of our own accord. 
we didn't need the Ospreys at all to do this site, to run this mission, I should say, to be very technical. But you did get a chance to see just how effective they are. And uh, yeah, they're pretty cheap to get your hands on. Probably get into a pair of them for 60 mil, which I know isn't cheap to everybody. But, you know, once you get going, that is cheap. I promise you, everything just escalates beautifully in this game. And uh, yeah, <laughs> easy mode for sure, certainly in that first room. But the second room and this third room is all on the Drake. And uh, I think we can say he has uh, proved himself quite well. So as I say, we're going to retire him from level 4 mission running service. Right, we're back to real speed now because he's going to hit me with the reps. Just there you go. I was just I was probably about 60% shield down. He must be getting into range or something here. What's going on? I'm only getting hit by one. Wait, wait till they all kick in. Come on, come and rep me up. There you go. He can even get his drones involved. I've managed to keep all of my drones alive for the entire site as well, guys, which I think, if you know me, that is quite an achievement. However, right at the end here, these frigates get spawned when you attack the boss guy, kind of the mission objective man. Because I have actually finished the mission now, to be honest with you. And they kill one. <laughs> so there you go. Karma dictates I don't get through an event with all my drones. Unless there's something very odd going on. What can I say? Anyway, I hope you found this useful or entertaining. And uh, if you remember the Summer of Rage better than I do, then feel free to comment below and fill in the details. It's, bit, it's in the murky past for me now, to be quite honest with you. Leave us a comment any kind you like and leave your in-game name in your comment if you want to be in with a chance of that lovely, lovely Vedmax skin. Subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel grow. Share this video if anyone you know might find it interesting. Have fun. Try out some Logi. It is very good. But from me, from Dex, from the Navy issue Drake, who you probably won't see again for a while, he gets into some heroic situation out on the low sec belts i'll ask you to take care of yourselves and each other remember even is believing fly safe fly brave and for now my friends goodbye